Honor, just one tip. It's it's not Nutella. I was thinking of just eating a spoonful first. God, no. You won't eat it ever again if you put a spoonful on and chuck it in your mouth. I was thinking, I was, I was thinking of doing that. Vegemite. That, that's a good that's a good tasting test. They said not to do it, but... Are this is going to be a challenge. I have grocery goods in one hand, a GoPro on the other. My grocery over here. I hope I don't drop it on the way. And I think I'm going the wrong way. Oh, yikes. Oh, guys. All this to go back. All this to have a home cooked meal. Kind of home. Not really a home. I mean, it's a home. But no, I mean, it's a home for five days. All right. Let's go back home. All right, I'm crazy, but I'm taking the stairs. Oh, boy. I think... My Airbnb is like about a mile away, so we got our goods, we got our food. Why don't trip in the stairs? It's a workout, a Melbourneian workout. Only in Australia. Oh shoot! Say this. No. Yep. Woo! Onto the streets of Melbourne. Oh, I don't even have. You know what's funny? I don't even have internet. I don't have any. Why am I out of breath? I don't have any signal whatsoever. So I have no idea where I'm at. I have no idea where I'm at. I recognize that building, but which way is my apartment? Something's telling me I should go this way or that way. I think I'm, something's telling me to go this way. Woo. Groceries. Hopefully, I'm not missing out. I'm not missing anything. Got my money, got my cell phone, got my groceries. I need to hold it like this. I really hope this doesn't break. It honestly feels like it's breaking, but it's Australian bags. Australian bags are sturdy, super sturdy. Dude, that's beautiful. Oh, okay. This place is ringing a bell. I was at the Victoria Library, and uh, uh, let's just say, I think I know where I'm going. I just need to find Beckett Street from Trobe. Oh, oh, Father's Office? Father's Office, you're global. You can find that in the States as well. Father's Office is good. I actually see, saw Jennifer Gardner. Now they're going to father's office in Santa Monica. All right, I gotta catch this. Gotta jog. You know what would suck if I drop all my groceries in the middle of the street? Middle of a busy street of Melbourne? That would suck. Oh. All right, which way, which way? So this is Swanston. I have no idea what that is. This is Trope. I think this is Trope. No. Yes. Yes. No. No, it's not. Where am I? Where am I? Okay. Oh, move through the people. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna go this way. All right. I, uh, honestly, I feel I gotta put the bag on another hand. So currently right now, my bag is on the GoPro hand because I, I promise you, it feels like it's gonna rip. And uh, we don't need that. Even though it's extra heavy, I'm having a GoPro in a grocery bag. Whose bright idea was this anyway? Ooh, shoe stopper. Whose bright idea was this to grocery shop? I don't know. Oh, oh, shoot. God. Okay. This is fun though. This is fun. I'm having fun. I really am. Really. You know what? I think my right hand's lighter. Oh my gosh, dude. I seriously feel it's gonna rip. Come on. Come on, Melbourneian bags. You can do it. You could last long. You can last long, you can last until the apartment, you won't rip, and we'll have a great meal when we get back home. Let's go. Excuse me. Okay, this has to be the Jackie Chan Mall. So, this is looking quite familiar. I feel like we're almost home as well. Why did I buy a lot of stuff? I better eat all this tonight. Ooh -wee. 
Hawaii. Oh, I love this weather. This weather is great. Dude, it's like California. It's like home. It literally is like California. The weather is just like California. Melbourne has really great weather. Nice, cold, a little bit overcast. Can't wait till it's sunny. I know it's not gonna, I know it's gonna stop raining tomorrow. So that's gonna be good. Sorry. Wait, why the heck am I running? Why am I in a rush? Oh, I gotta relax. Why, why, am I, why am I in a rush? Did that vibe in the grocery store suddenly sparked my need to rush? Gosh, am I turning into a Melbourneian? Where I have to be rushing every minute, every hour? No, I gotta relax. I'm a Californian. I'm trying to be like, chill, like the waves. All right. If we're getting dessert, we're getting... All right. Ooh, pepper lunch. Dude, you know it's a coincidence? I was watching a Dale Phillip video and he loves pepper lunch. I should stop. Pepper, I gotta give it a go. We don't. We definitely don't have a pepper lunch back home Whew, in uh, in LA. And uh, so this is Elizabeth Street, Beckett Street. Oh, Beckett Street might be this way. Oh yes, no, that's it. Hungry Man, the fake Burger King. Let's go. Go this way. Dude, I was gonna do push-ups coming back to the apartment. But I don't think I need to anymore because I'm creating quite a workout. Hungry Jacks. I remember that. La Trobe. So I think we have to go left. Don't run me over fine sir. Okay. Alright. Okay, so there's La Trobe. A Beckett. And the trobe are parallel to each other. I know that. I memorized that. Oh. Dude, I'm getting a workout for real. Oh, dude, my biceps are, are super sore. Super duper sore. Dude, this is beautiful. Australia. Wow. This is amazing, man. It really is. Totally different. I thought I'll show it's gonna be like California, but it's not. It's its own thing. But I did say that Australia has similar California weather. But uh, now that's the only thing similar. Other than that, it's kind of different. It's pretty different. Similar, similar, and different. Okay, this is all looking familiar. All right, I know how to get back home. See, you don't need internet all the time. You can get back home through memorization alone. Of your shop. I love Melbourne. Yes. We made it home. This is it. This is all looking familiar. See, I'm memorizing it. Ah, yes. Oh, this is it. Home sweet home. Oh, sorry. Oh. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. All right, we made it. Oh. Oh, perfect. Awesome. Why was I rushing? <laughs> okay, level three. That was fun. What a rush. Now we got a nice meal that I'm going to cook right now. And who, yeah, man. Gosh. Is that what it feels like to be a city folk? Is that what it feels like to, to really like? to rush in a grocery store, going through the hordes of people, through traffic, through the mean streets of Melbourne, where it's all crazy, chaotic, but delicious in their cuisine. All right, let's go. Go home. I believe I'm not a Melbourneian just yet. Boom, shakalaka, ooh, ah, ja, ja, ah, dude, ah, fudge, come on, there you go. Heavy door, man. Everything in oh in Australia is big and heavy. <laughs> Woo! Alright, there's our kitchen. We're gonna use it. Let's get to cook it. Alright, that's before a much needed water break. 
Oh yeah! <laughs> Boom! Look at that. Got my steak and parmesan there. The Mr. Beast chocolate, unsalted butter, Kit Kat milk, Milo, the green beans. This was already in the hotel. Thank you, Airbnb host. Coke, Milo, and water. I am really starving, and as you can tell, it's daytime outside because it's the morning. I was so tired from. <laughs> from running from one point of the city to the other, back to this apartment. And um, yeah, I mean, the, the those two bags over there weighed a good amount and jogging, running, when there was no really any reason for me to be in a rush. Why well, was in a rush? That, that Melbourneian haste or rush in the grocery store was really contagious. So I, I just started like, I just started running. I was like, why am I even running? Too, trying too hard to be a Melbourneian. Anyway, let's get to cooking. Today, what's on the menu is gonna be Scotch fillet with pasta and green beans. All right, let's get this started. I also forgot to mention, we're gonna finally try Vegemite. Oh my goodness. The lady, Katrina, she told me not to have a spoonful of it, but I promised myself I would. Shouldn't be that bad. I think I'll like it. Good for B vitamins and vitality. Vegemite. And we need something to cook to have a nice sear with a steak. This is perfect. This is probably, you know, if I ever visit Melbourne again, I'm gonna rent this Airbnb. This has everything just for 60 US dollars per night. And we need something to boil the pasta. I think this is big enough. I'm just gonna go only boil a small little clump. I'm not gonna eat that much. Even though actually I'm starving. I All I ate yesterday was just a slice of pizza and, and that weird Pepsi. Um, that pasta for the sauce. I always suggest use this guys for, for if you wanna make a good tomato sauce. Do not get like the, the pre-made tomato sauce with the seasonings and all that. You just need tomato, 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 tomato. If you can get a fresh tomato, boil it, peel it, very good. That's actually better, but I'm kind of in a rush. kind of want to go out and do stuff today. Um, so I got the finely pulpa, finely chopped tomatoes. Perfect for a sauce, that's all you need. Simple, sauce, straight up tomato, just tomato. No, no salt, no seasoning, just tomato. An onion and garlic. Ah, oh, whoa. Basically, an onion, garlic, the tomato sauce, just pure tomatoes. Tomatoes from certified pr production from Italy. Just also, just regular tomato. You can make a great, great tomato sauce. I forgot to have, uh, bring um, parsley, but it's okay. We'll just have it very uh, plain. And some seasoning, of course. Tribe salt, what's it? Oh no, I have to say tribe. Table salt. A little bit about, you know, I just put salt only. I only put salt in my tomatoes. Just a really plain, simple tomato sauce. Trust me, you try this simple recipe, you'll love it. And it's gonna be a big difference with this spike. No offense to Prego, but this is 1,000 times better than Prego. And you can add your own stuff. You can add mushroom, you can add whatever. I'm already adding onions. You can add mushroom, you can add cheese, but this is the bare bones, simple tomato sauce to pair with my steak. It's gonna be good. Trust me, it's gonna be great. Let's get, before we take out the steak, wait, let's actually boil the water first. But before, while we boil the water, and before we take out the steak, we're gonna go, um, we're gonna go get rid of the cutting. The cutting of the onions and the cutting of the garlic. Uh, let's do this. Wow. I never thought I'd be cooking in Melbourne. Which pot is, I think I want the closest one. Okay, we'll get that boiling. I want it. Okay, I, how am I gonna produce a nice sear with that? Am I doing this right? What? That's it? Oh man, how can I make a good sear with that fire? Oh, oh gosh. Oh, there you go. So that's that. Um, well, I guess I can. I really don't have a choice, do I? That's, so this is off. This is both of them. Okay, I'm just getting used to the system. <laughs> what am I doing? You know what? Oh man, I wanted to, I guess I have to sear on that side. All right. There we go. 
I want it to sear on that because that's a really good, that's a really hot fire, but that's okay. You know what? Let that boil there. Boom. Bada bing, bada boom. That's all you gotta do. All right, off to cutting the veggies. Oh, it's hot as well. Let's get into cutting the veggies out of the way. Garlic and onion, let's go. Oh yes, shame. The chef's knife. And that is how you peel garlic. Mmm, Australian garlic. I love it. All right, garlic is peeled. Now time for the onion. Time for the onion. I should probably wash it. Oh, that's a mess. Half peel like so. You know, sometimes to make it easier. You kind of sacrifice a layer, but what else? Oh, I absolutely do. Love a sharp knife. Ooh, that was close. It's really sharp. I'm gonna mince it up, because this is gonna be in our tomato sauce. We don't want it to be big chunks of onions. We only want nice and little tiny bits of onion. Really mince, finely mince. Because we want it to kind of melt and caramelize in the sauce. Okay, that should be done. And always use the back to scoop up, to scoop up the 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 bits of onions don't use a sharp blade to scoop it up use the blunt blade the blunt blade because you don't want to dull your knife that's an easy way to dull your knife but there you go finally look at that super fine chopped okay that's enough it's addicting i know but using the blunt side of the blade don't want to dull it want to make it extra sharp for the next Airbnb guest. Next is the garlic. Just stack them up like here. We're gonna really, just same like the onions, just really mince it and, uh, and just really mince it. So the garlic itself could just, could just blend with the sauce. I'm telling you, this is a really sharp knife. It's so good. The knives that I use back home are super dull. But dude, this, oh, that's sharp, yeah. All right, nice and minced. Next is to make the sauce, which is also the fun part. Okay. Next is the meat. Oh yes, we're gonna have, uh, I don't know why I have two. Oh my goodness. Well, I guess for the next time. Um, scotch fillet, beef scotch fillet steak. I've heard this is a good cut. And I've also heard it's just, it's just a ribeye steak. It's just how they call it back here in Australia. But let's go, let's season it properly. I'm just gonna season it only with salt. I'm not, um, I mean, I do love pepper. But, you know, okay, I'll add some pepper. The water is boiling already. Nice and boiling hot. Let's go add the pasta. It's gonna be a light lunch. Just one roll of pasta. Ah, you know what, I'm kind of hungry. Two rolls of pasta. Two rolls. Now, boom. Bada bing, bada boom, let that boil. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna turn it down a bit. Oh no, that's. Right, I'm trying to make this pan really hot. I hope there's a vent here because this apartment is gonna start smoking. <laughs> uh, 
so much for my cooking show. It's just pasta smoke. Okay, we're gonna have a little challenge here. We need to cook the meat quick. To prevent cross contamination, we need a sim, just a separate cutting board. We need ourselves some tongs. Yeah. I know how to open the window a bit. While I was gonna actually explain that, the alarm went off, so. Yeah, just open the door for the window a bit, and uh, yeah, we got a nice breeze. Yes, you can hear the construction outside. There's actually people working out here. Where is he? Oh, he was like literally on that, on that um, area, working. It's cool, construction guy. Maybe I should offer him some uh, steak. Ha! <laughs> Just kidding. All right, let's open this right now. Oh wait, silly me. Don't need a knife. Let's open it. Ooh, wow. God's fill it. We have to pat the meat dry. Nice and dry. If you want a good sear, I recommend seasoning it with salt and leaving it in the fridge for at least 12 hours. That'll take all the dryness out. But we're in a time crunch. I just want a good juicy steak right now. And also it has to be room temperature. After you salt it and leave it in the fridge for a little while, make sure it's in room temperature. And uh, yeah, and just dr literally just dry it out so that, so that you get a nice crisp sear. Seems like a lot of salt, but it's a big piece of meat and you need the salt. Wait, let's see. Yeah, that's salt. Speaking of cross contamination, I just literally licked the same, whatever, whatever. I'm okay, I'll be fine. Black pepper. That's it, simple, salt and pepper. Look at that, we got it all prepped. Salted, seasoned steak, got the garlic, got the onion. Redo. Oh, come on. Yes. Let's go check on the pasta. We want the pasta to be a little bit undercooked because it, when you remove it from the boiling water, it actually continues to cook for reals. And then you kind of want that, you know, the cliche word, the typical word with pasta is al dente. Let's check if it's al dente. Bro, I could actually feel it with the tongs. Might need a little bit more time to boil. So we're gonna let it boil a little bit more. And then we're gonna off to sear the steak. So let that boil. And then the steak, we're gonna blast it even higher. There you go. Hopefully it's nice and hot. Have a good, perfect sear. And then we can make the sauce. We're not gonna make the sauce just yet. We gotta sear the steak first. We gotta sear so all the fat and the crust and everything that lives, did I say it lives? That gets left on the pan, the little crunchy meaty bits will be added with or onion will be added there and then the sauce the acidity of the tomato sauce remove all that crunchy bit stuck into the pan gonna be putting massive amounts of flavor in there and then you add the garlic glass and then boom you got your meaty tomato sauce to go with the i believe this is parpadelli that's a lamington that's not pasta yes egg parpadelli so yeah so we're almost there we're almost done and then afterwards we go explore melbourne some more Totally forgot about the butter. We need the butter. Australian butter. We need that for the sauce and to base the steak with. Mm. At the color of this butter, it looks really bright yellow. It looks really heavy. It looks delicious. I cannot wait to use it on my steak. Can't wait to use it on the sauce. Can't wait. Can't wait. I'm hungry. Oh my goodness. And I gotta wash this knife just in case because. I didn't use it to cut the steak, but it was on top of the same cutting board I was using the steak with. All right, I believe the steak is now ready to get a good sear. No oil whatsoever. You really want that good sear, and you really want to turn that fire alarm off. Let's do this. Let's sear. Oh, that's the sound you want to hear. Listen to that sizzle. Hmm. Yes. Just leave it there, don't touch it. Just let it go, leave it alone. And we gotta wash this cutting board because we don't want any cross-contamination. Looks good to go. 
It looks pretty al dente. I didn't use these tongs yet for the steak yet. By the feel of it with the tongs, it looks good. Dang it! The fire alarm is raising again. It's al dente. Let's go. Now let's get. Ah! Ah! Whoa. Ah! When you cook with me, you get a workout as well. All this for a steak dinner. For steak dinner. Okay, come on, let's do this. We need a good sear. No, wrong one. There you go. Actually, no, we need a stronger flame. This is for the sauce. This is for the sear. <sighs> My goodness. Fire alarm is bugging me. It's a monster. We gotta flip it. Please let it be a good sear. All right, decent sear, decent sear. Nice and decent sear. Let's do it. All right. Woo! Come on, sear better. Come on, alarm. Stop bugging me. I could have got a way better sear than that. You can't bugging me. Darn you, alarm. I just want a good, perfectly seared steak. I think the construction workers outside are, look at me now, no construction workers, cool. All right, I think it's time to transport this fire alarm. It's really telling me to, to not, uh, oh. use the lower flame. All right, we're transferring, we're transferring. You win, oh, you win, oh. It's an anti steak, okay. Whew. I just wanted a perfect sear. That's all. Just a perfect sear. All right. Whew. Okay. Really quickly, really quickly. Before the alarm bugs me again, we're gonna have a good amount of butter. Boom. Put on low heat, very low, so it doesn't smoke. Garlic, I love garlic. Put that there. It's gonna be super low heat. I'm uh, gonna add just a sprig of rosemary. Rosemary is a bit too strong for me, so I only add a little bit, just one. Boom, just like that. And then we grab a nice spoon. Where's the spoon? This one I saw spoons before here. Ah, about there. The perfect spoon. I'll use this spoon. And then, I'm gonna go and baste. Just baste it. With the garlic on top, the rosemary. Thank goodness that the, that the fire alarm stops bothering me, you know? Thank goodness. I think we've been cooking it for too long. I really do hope. Look at that. Look at that sauce. That's flavor right there. I wonder if you can see that. It's like nice, not burnt. A perfectly colored brown butter over the steak. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Nice and brown. Okay, oh. Oh, oh that's so good. That's the kind of bounciness I want. So we're gonna go remove it. And it's gonna cook further. It's gonna cook further while we let it rest. So nice base there. We're gonna let it cook further over here. Top of the cutting board. Nice and cooked. Let's put it over here. There you go. Rosemary. Next is the sauce. 
So we're gonna let that let that chill. And then now we're gonna add the onions. Let it caramelize in there. It's a lot of onions. I minced in a good amount. Using the blunt side of my knife. Okay, cool. And just uh same spoon we used to base the steak. Butter, the bits of the of the beef, of the steak, to create a kind of, I don't know, I'm not really that much of a chef. I'll just call it the sauce, the base of the, no, the base is the tomato. Whatever, we're caramelizing the onion. We're caramelizing it. We're just gonna make a simple, meaty tomato sauce. With a hint of, ro you know what? I, I don't know, I've never had rosemary in my tomato sauce before, but trying something new. Have I ever actually? No, no, I, I never had tomato sauce in my rosemary, but yeah. Do that. Let it caramelize. Let it chill. Let it good. And this is chilling too. This guy's just chilling. He's chilling. He's chilling. All right. How could I forget the green beans? They're camouflage under the Kit Kat. Great. A good, great handful. Nicely rinsed. We're going to cook it ever so slightly. That's it. I don't have any ice water to shock it. But I'm gonna go lightly blanch it, and then I'm gonna add it to some cold water to stop the cooking process. I wish I had ice water. We don't have that. We're gonna try and shock it the 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 poor man's way. Wait, ice is not that expensive. Ah, whatever. Anyway, all right. Now it's perfectly caramelized. Time to add the acidity to it to remove. Well, I mean, this is such a good pan. The bits of uh, of meat in here is like it's already it went on the onions. Right? We need tomato sauce, so off to the tomato. Just regular old tomato. You could use fresh tomato, just boil it, peel it, add it there, mash it. But I just add, just add fresh, well it's not really fresh, it's canned. Just regular tomato. No seasoning, just crushed tomatoes in a can from the country of Italy. And then we add it. No, don't put too much, just a little bit. I'm not gonna use the whole entire can, so I don't want the flavor of the beef to be hidden from the tomato, just a little bit, maybe just a quarter of the can. And then I do not like adding, I don't like adding the garlic with the onion because sometimes garlic is not sometimes all the time. Garlic is really easy to burn, so add it last onto the sauce. You know, sprinkle it over there, making a mess out of the Airbnb kitchen, but don't worry, I'll clean it. And then let this let this simmer. Stir it up, let it cook. And there is our tomato sauce, our meaty tomato sauce from the flavor of the scotch to it. Oh no, our green beans. See, I like my green beans to have a little bit of a crunch to it, not overcooked. No one likes soggy green beans. So right now, as of now, I just put it like maybe at most two minutes. It's getting cooked, it's getting blanched. Now I'm just gonna go stop the cooking process, still have that bright green color. And let's go put in some cold water. There you go. Dump all the hot water out. Oh, just let it run. And just, oh, wait, it's good. Oh, no, that's hot. To stop the cooking process, it's still warm. It's still cooking, believe it or not. Yes, it's still cooking. I like my greens to be kind of raw, just blanched, you know. Still have that bright green color. It should be ice cold water, but I'll just use the regular cold water. Yeah, all better. All right, that's it. Yeah. Look at this though, look at that. Ooh, it's looking good. Nice tomato sauce. You know what? We got a season. Let's give it a go, let's give it a taste. Oh, that's sweet. I didn't even add any sugar. That's like a naturally sweet tomato sauce. Not like sweet like candy, but just you could tell. A little bit of salt. Oh, dude, this is delicious. Alrighty, so the sauce is nicely reduced. Time to add the al dente noodles. It's very, very slightly cooked. It, it still has a hard texture to it, but with the sauce, 
it's gonna cook it some more and it's gonna have that nice bouncy pasta al dente view. Bada bing bada boom. Put a little pasta on it. Then we're just gonna toss it up. And this sauce just nicely toss it. Mm -hmm. So it's evenly all evenly coated. Gosh, this is a lot of pasta. Whoops, I put too much. Yeah, some good pasta. Yeah, pasta. Godzilla is a good guy. Nicely tossed. Look at that. Nicely tossed. Yeah. Like, like, like that. Okay. I wish I had olive oil. Ooh, I need olive oil. But no, I should have bought olive oil. Wait, there might be hope. There might be olive oil. Come on. Oh, they had Vegemite already. <laughs> All right. Oh, no canola. Oh, oh, no. Yay, olive oil, dude. Heck yes. Bro, you gotta have that olive oil. Yes. yes. I'm gonna sprinkle it. I'm gonna sprinkle it with just a dab of olive oil. Fresh olive oil when I start plating. Let's get to plating, actually. Let's get to plating. We'll start with the pasta. Let's not stain the Airbnb's countertop. Oh, that looks nice. There you go. Put a little more. Okay, there you go. That's it. Nicely done. Just a tad bit of olive oil. Tad bit of olive oil. Gotta have the cheese. Gotta have the cheese. It even has a security protected. Grana Padano Corrado. Yes. I kind of like cheese, like a lot of cheese on my pasta, so this is gonna take a while. I don't know, it's weird. It was hard taking it out with the tongs, so I'm just gonna use my fingers for this steak. I mean, I am the one eating the food. Look at that. Now that is the Australian steak dinner. All, everything from Australia. The beef, the butter, the garlic, the green beans, the pasta. Well, no, the pasta's kind of from Italy. The, I think the Parmesan's from Italy too. Okay, Italian and Australian. Wow, look at that, y'all. That is nice. Oh, I can't wait to dig in. But I feel something's missing. Oh, yes. Like I said, I really do love cheese. Like I really like wanted to make it look like snow. Mmm, cheese. Okay. Okay, 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 for real. Though. Looks good. Oh. This looks amazing. Now I need the utensils. Whew. All right. All right, there you have it, guys. My steak lunch with the scotch fillet fillets, fillet, basted with butter and garlic and rosemary, use the steak bits and deglaze it with acidity with a tomato sauce for my pasta. Garlic, steak bits, tomato, just regular canned tomato, no, um, uh, no prego, no fancy prego, but I use a good, a good quality can, polpa. I, I showed it to you guys already. It's, wine if you want to see it um and some parmigrano badanos you know some cheese some par parmigrano something and i didn't want to put any butter on the green beans because there's already enough butter in this and cheese and butter in the steak on the steak so uh yeah let's go get this started but before we dig in we have a special australian appetizer vegemite all right i've never had vegemite before and um Let's give it a go. All right, never had it. 
don't know what the flavors are. Well, I was told it was salty, and the lady in the store said, don't have a spoonful of it, but I promised myself I'll have a spoonful of it. So let's do it. Let's enjoy this appetizer. Let's do it. All right, let's see what this... It smells like, it smells like chocolate. Mm. All right, something nice, ooh. Like some nice, nice. Look at that. That's a good, that's a good tasting test. I mean, they said not to do it, but I'll just, Wow, that's not so bad. Come on, ooh. Mmm. It's a good appetizer. It's a very good Australian appetizer. All right, I'll tell you the taste tones I'm getting. Soy sauce. It tastes like soy sauce. It tastes like coagulated soy sauce. Mmm. Not so bad. Ooh. Yeah. Mm. That wasn't bad at all. I could imagine it being good with bread, but that was good. Ooh. Whew. It's like if soy sauce punched you in the face. That's what it, Vegemite is. Wow. Mmm. What a great appetizer. That's delicious. It's not that scary. Where's my water? There's my water. Okay, got the water. Mm. Let's go try the pasta. Ooh, that olive oil is a nice touch. Mm. Ooh, yes. Oh yeah, the cheese. You gotta love the cheese, just simple. Tomato, Parmesan, Pasta, olive oil. Mmm. Oh man. So much better than that Vegemite. <laughs> Just kidding. I'll give Vegemite a, a fair chance next time. I'll put it on bread and butter. Overall, I like it. I could imagine tasting the tones, the taste of that. I could imagine that being in like being good with mixed up with butter. Hmm. It had like a soy sauce flavor to it. Let's give the steak a try now. Do we cook it right? Did we sear it right? Is it gonna be juicy? Is it gonna be medium rare? Did I do it right? Did I overcook it? Is it well done? Is it medium rare? People be scratching this plate. Oh my gosh, look at that. Now that is a nice cut of beef. Ooh. Oh yeah, look at that. It might not look like it, but in my eyes, it's pink. Perfectly cooked. This is how I like it. Medium rare. Almost, it's almost borderline medium, but no. Australian Scotch fillet. Will it be good? Will I taste the difference between Ralph's steak? Ralph's. Mmm. 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 This is gonna be a good meal. Something's missing though. Coke. That's what's missing. Oh, I need a nice drink for a nice beautiful day. Oh, look at the mist come out. Oh, look at that. Do you see that smoke? Fancy. Oh yeah. I should probably tilt the thing a little bit more. Oh yeah, oh, oh yeah, not too much. Not too much. What a meal. What a meal in Melbourne. Who knew I would be in a random apartment in the middle of downtown Melbourne, drinking, eating good food, drinking good drinks. Ah, mm. It's so good.
Do you know, you can actually mix up wine and Coke, and it's called a Calmico. Calmico or Calmicho? Oh. Oh. Cooked to perfection. The steak, you don't even need sauce. Just eat it by itself. Oh, delicious. Oh. Mm. Delicious. You know what be good with this? Hot sauce. Ooh, and olives. Look at that. Mm. GG's. Delicious. Ooh. What's for dessert? <laughs> this is what f This is what's for dessert. Yes, Australian sweets. Well, I mean, you could find Milo everywhere else. I, I think I could find, I, have, I mean, I haven't seen a Milo energy dairy snack pack like this back in the States. I might be wrong, maybe I'm not exploring uh, enough. But yeah, there's a lot of Milo brands, a lot of Milo everything in Australia. We don't get enough Milo in uh, in the US, except in like Seafood City. Weirdly enough, only like when I go to Filipino stores is where I find a lot of Milo stuff. We also got Cadbury. I was told by Katrina, the nice lady in Woolies, the fellow grocery shopper, that these are Australian. Uh, you can only find these in Australia, as well as this stuff right here. Caramel Wallabies, Caramel Koalas. I've never seen this type of flavor Kit Kat. Milky Bar Kit Kat. And I know Kit Kat has a lot of different. And like when I said about Milo, there's Milo in everything, everywhere. Maybe it's just the region, the Pacific region, the Eastern Pacific region, or Southeast, Southwest, whatever. Pacific region. It's a bunch of Milo. And of course, Lamingtons. And I know uh, I didn't get any Tim Tams because I wasn't able to find any Tim Tams. No, okay, I'm lying. To tell the truth, I forgot. I, I left Woolies and I forgot to get Tim Tams. But hey, we got Lamingtons. Can't find Lamingtons in the state. Lamington fingers. And I, dude, I've never seen the dude. This is what caught my eye. What? I love. Oh, I is this? Wow! You, you can't really explain. It. You can't really say anything. You just look at it. This looks delicious. Look at that. I love chocolate. And there's a literally a chocolate center. I love chocolate chip ice cream. But this is looks like a chocolate vanilla. Oh my gosh! Come on, dude. We need this in the states. Please, anybody, if you can find this in the states. Please say in the comments where can I find it. If you're in California, please let me know. Let's give this a go. We'll start with the most authentic, out of all this, Australian snack, Lamington Fingers. All right, so it looks like a, a sponge cake covered in coconut. Look at that. Uh-huh. Mmm. Taste what the description says. Sponge cake, coconut, chocolate. Do I give it a thumbs up? I give it a two thumbs up. Mmm. All right. Oh yeah, that's good. Ooh, I bought too much. All right. Whoa, that's spongy. Water. Ah! All of these. All right. Cadbury. We do, okay, to be honest, we do have Cadbury in the United States, but like regular milk chocolate, regular chocolate bars, you know, like a cracker or something, but we definitely don't have wallabies. Cool. 
Imagine like a fancy restaurant and then say, what's for dessert, sir? Cadbury's, wallabies, milk, caramel, chocolates. Look at that. It's cute. All right. Mmm. Whoa. It reminds me of this one candy from the Philippines. Straight up. Tastes like this, like milky, caramelly. Goodness, but like it's like more milky than caramel. It's like they're making caramel, but they have overdosed on the milk. It's good. I like it. It's a good snack. Um, she told me there's something in the belly area, like a filling. Let's see if she's right. <laughs> there's not. <laughs> Darn it, Katrina! I thought there was stuff in the belly. Overall, it's good. Do I give it a thumbs up? I give it a two thumbs up. Mm. All right. Oh. Ooh. Ooh, that's so sweet. Ooh. Ooh. Running out of water. I'm running out of water. All right. Next, in the list, same thing as before but a little bit different. Cadbury Koala. Is this the one where she said there's uh, there's gonna be caramel in the koala's belly? Let's give it a go. Caramel Koala. Look at that, cute little fella. Go for the head. Whoa! Oh! Oh, she wasn't kidding. Look at that. The caramel inside the koala's gut, the guts. <laughs> Just kidding. Inside the koala's belly, it's caramel. She wasn't lying. Katrina, you're awesome. If you're watching this, please. I really do hope you find this video. Thank you for showing me around the grocery store. Showing me the authentic Australian candies and snacks. Why don't you show me more? Mm. Oh, cool. Delicious, delicious. Mmm. Now this. Do I give this a thumbs up? I give this a three thumbs up. Mmm. I'm having a lot of sugar today. That's up. Kit Kat. Milo. This is the most... This is like... Desserts on steroids. This is a lot of dude. This is so sweet. I mean, I eat candy regularly. Kind of, not really. I don't know why this is so sweet for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> follow instructions, Julius. Follow instructions. Aha! Holy, there's supposed to be like a Milo, Milo thing in. But I barely could see it. I guess that's it right there. You know? It was delicious, don't get me wrong. It's good. I will definitely buy this again, but. It doesn't taste any different from a regular Kit Kat. This is like if a Kit Kat was just double chocolate. I don't taste Milo. I just taste... I mean, I just taste Kit Kat. Mmm. Mmm. It's good, though. Look, I know because Milo has a distinct flavor. I don't taste it in this Kit Kat. Ugh. What the fudge? Ugh. That caught me off guard. It's, it's not disgusting. It, 
Whoa. Okay. Yeah. yeah I don't taste anything. No. The whoa. 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 What is wrong with this thing? It doesn't taste bad, but the texture. What in the world? Am I eating like? What is that? I thought I was. I was expecting like milk. Is it spoiled? No. No way. I'm reading the date wrong. Okay, normally I think it's an American thing where the month is the first. I think that's the month. 11, 8, 2023. Not August 11, 2023. Because right now it's October. It doesn't taste spoiled. I'm pretty sure that the second's the month. Usually, well, in the States, well, more, more of me, the, the month is in the start, second is the date, and then the year. Over here, it's... <laughs> If I was going to translate to how I read the, the calendar, August 11th, 2023. No, but I'm going to have the benefit of doubt. You guys put your month in the middle. I got to get a plate for this. Look at this. I didn't... Let's go for it again. That was weird. Yeah. It's not a drink. It's a... It's pudding. Look at that. It's a pudding. <laughs> yeah, it caught me off guard. Mm. They're good. That would be more of like a drink, but it's a pudding. Nah, I don't think it's spoiled. I think literally it, it's best used by 11, which is November. So. Mm. Mm. Pudding. Energy dairy snack, okay. Kit Kat, Milky Bar. Let's give this a go. Also, I was talking about people working in the side. There they are. That's one dude. There he is. I wonder what they're working on. Let's show some stuff. Give it a go. Milky. Will it taste like white chocolate? Let's see. Mm. Yeah, it tastes like white chocolate. Oh. That's actually really good. <laughs> That's really good. Yeah. What a dessert. I want to finish all this. That's going to be too much sugar, Bob. Hmm. What a great day, eating some good food in a great city. Mm. I need some water. Got any water? Mm. The winners are these guys. These are really good. The Lamingtons are good. The Koalas, they're great too. But these, get five thumbs up. Oh my God. These win. Winner. No. What am I saying? What am I saying? We have another contender. The Cadbury Dairy Milk. Let's give this a try. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at that seal. It's nice. Last, but definitely not least. Ooh. <laughs> that looks delicious. This, actually, I can already tell this is the winner. Look at that. Look at that. Look how look how nice and good that looks and decadent and just bits of chocolate and vanilla ice cream with a chocolate core. Let's try the ice cream first. Is the vanilla oh look at that. Wow, that's really good. Let's try the center. Oh look at that chocolate. Okay, that gooey chocolate syrup. Whoa! Why don't we have this in the US? Yo! Yo, there's like tiny bits of chocolate 
like a Cadbury chocolate and this vanilla ice cream. I'm liking this a lot. Oh man, I need this. I hope I gotta look for this back in the home. This is good. This I think hands down it's one of my top three ice creams. First, I would say, you know, go go regular Hug and Dad's vanilla. Second, Denali Moose Tracks. And third, this has to be one of my favorites. Jeez Louise. Oh my gosh. That's so good. Dude, I could finish this in one go, but I shouldn't. You know, and then have it with this. Mmm. Oh, man. Yo. Oh, it's so good. Man. That's so good. Oh, yeah. Yo. Yo, it's good. What's this? It's like a chocolate circle. Mm. Oh, I almost bit my lip. Ow. <laughs> my least favorite out of all. They're all great. But the least one is this. Yeah. This is basically a pudding. It's not a drink at all. It's not bad. It's good. Maybe when you're on the go, I mean, obviously how it's advertised. Oh. Man, but the winners are these. Five stars. Five thumbs up. Six thumbs up. Seven thumbs up. These are the winners right here. Oh my goodness. What a meal. What a meal. I just realized there's one more. Mr. Beast chocolate. I mean, I never seen Mr. Beast chocolate in, in the US, but only here, so. Let's try it. Mr. Beast, give me strength. Is it good? Whew. I think I ate more sugar than anything today. Whoa, that's cool. Devour. What is this? Thing? I feel like I'm in Willy Wonka. Oh no. Let's see how good this quality is. Mr. Beast. not bad then when I took that first bite I had a taste of like no no joke like fried onion <laughs> I don't why did I take a taste a hint of fried onion no grass-fed milk is to be small hmm I mean, it's okay. No, literally, I had like an explosion of like, onion. Why? It's not bad. It's nice. I gotta be honest though, the Kit Kat is good, but that one's okay. It's a nice dark, I'm, I'm getting more of a dark chocolate than a milk chocolate, to be honest. It's not bad, but really that first bite was kind of kind of weird. It tastes like an onion. Huh. Not bad. Not bad. Mr. Beast. Milk chocolate bar. Thank you, Mr. Beast. 100% Australian. Beef Scotch filling. Thumbs up? I give it a two thumbs up. Oh, and arguably, the best part is doing the dishes.
Where's the sponge? 